Hello. Hello, everybody. My name is Vince. I am outreach chair for ACM, and here is my workshop for today, Lead Code 101, The Underlying 14 Patterns. Uh, make sure before everything, before we start, make sure you have like Lead Code on like another tab, just for future reference. So we'll go for the context. So what is Lead Code? Uh, Lead Code started as a repository of common technical interview questions. This is, uh, this is true from the man Roy himself, so I don't really, <laughs> I don't know. Roy, are you here? Can you, can you explain a little bit of this? Uh, I, I can try. I, yeah, good, good. I'm not super sure if this is historically accurate, but yeah. I'm pretty sure Lead Code kind of just started as like a question bank um, that of like interview questions that were being asked at fang companies or now Manga. So like, you know, you have Google, <laughs> yeah. Facebook, now Meta, et cetera, et cetera. And now it's kind of evolved into like a 2000 plus question bank that mm. um, interviewers actually do tend to pull questions from for technical interviews. So it's kind of like flipped on the top of its head. But yeah. Yeah, power to the people. We started this and now we're, we're suffering from it. And so why should we be studying this stuff? The big thing is like technical interviews. If you ever get one of those leak code or like hacker rank questions, they're probably pulled from leak code. Uh, a lot of hacker ranks I've, I've actually seen as like not like one-to-one -one with leak code, but then once you get down to like the technical interviews, they're probably going to be pulled from leak code. So yeah, and also Roy added, uh, do you want to be a, a productive member of society or do you want to be an underwater basket weaver? That's just facts, you know? Every CS major has to, or like CS, EE, DS, uh, every single one of us are probably going to have to touch this stuff one day. So, you know, why not start now? Uh, again, why should we be studying technical interview questions? And then the very last slide, or the very last point right there, big money. You already know, you want that big money. And if you study these lead code questions, you'll get the big money. And so uh, a quick introduction to the 14 patterns. It's, it's pretty much uh, a compilation of patterns that somebody, I forgot who, but later I'll show you the link to the actual uh, blog post that is like all about the 14 patterns. But they realized that every single lead code problem can be boiled down to one of these 14 basic concepts that lead you towards the fastest way to actually solve the problem. So you'll be grinding a bunch of lead code, uh, you'll be doing a bunch of problems, and then you're going to be starting off with your brute force approach, which is probably n to the n squared uh, runtime, maybe like n cubed. And also your space complexity might be uh, n or like n squared even. Uh, but that's because you're not doing, you're not optimizing it to its like fullest potential and that's completely okay like like if you think that starting off with the brute force approach is like oh man i'm so i'm so down man like why why am i why did i think of that that's so dumb everybody thought of it at first so you, you don't have to really worry about that and uh yeah these patterns will lead you to an end uh, a no event solution most of the times and uh here's the complete list on the right right here. So you have, uh, yeah, you could, you could read that out. Uh, we're probably gonna be focusing on like the first three or the first like uh, first half of this list. Uh, I've set up for the first three. If we if I don't fill up the time for the first three, we'll just, you know, talk about our feelings or something. But uh, the first three is uh, sliding window, two pointers and uh, fast and slow pointers. And then merge intervals is actually really useful as well. Can we start with that actually? Which one? No, 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 no. We can't start with that. Like you, it's, it's. I'll talk about our feelings. I th we, wait, that's untrue. That's untrue. Maybe, maybe a little bit after we'll, we'll uh, talk our feelings through, through code. You ever feel that? Express yourself through code. Uh, print hello world, and then uh, <laughs> yeah, come back. Uh, uh, merge intervals pretty useful. Cyclic, uh, cyclic sort also pretty useful. But uh, if you want to look uh, into more of the patterns, I'll have a link out towards the end. And then uh, I just want to add, like, with this last bullet point, knowing is half the battle. Like, if you don't know about these patterns, you're not going to be knowing about or not knowing to look for them. So once you have that little plant in your mind about what to look for, then then the code just becomes like so much easier. So uh, we have our initial setup here. This is like a more interactive 
thing than just like a general meeting. Like if you want to listen to like a like a lecture kind of thing, that's where you go to our general meetings. But this is a workshop, you know, so we're going to work. So uh, our first thing is to make a lead code account. Does anybody not have a lead code account? I'm just wondering. How do we fill out the pattern specific questions for lead code? Uh, these patterns aren't like specifically advertised by lead code, but there is a, yes, there you go. Andre, so smart. I have that exact link like towards the end of my slides. But yeah, there's like a, there's like, uh, third party websites where people just like do it for you. And so if you look in this website, let me see. Can you still see this? All right, yeah, so like this website has like a bunch of patterns or a bunch of questions, like ranging from easy to hard. And these uh, patterns in the middle right here tell you what you specifically have to look out for. And so here you see fast and slow pointers. So yeah, we're gonna learn about that. Two pointers, see? So you already know everything comes back. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh man, someone's question. How do we feel? Someone raised their hand. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry for not catching that. Oh, uh, no, I was just uh, raising my hand that I haven't created a leak. Code. Oh, okay. I'm creating one right now. Go for it, go for it, go for it. Leak pain? Oh, you shouldn't have. That's uh, that's that's behind the scenes stuff. Don't look at that. But yeah, oh, but yeah. Uh, make a leak code account. If anybody else needs some time to set that up, please do so. I don't want to go on and like people be behind and stuff. But yeah, there's an optional. Who made this cartoon? I don't know. I looked up. Uh, I felt like the slide was pretty empty, so I looked up leak code meme and. Uh, Somebody was very smart and made a big O is bigger than, or more important than big arms. So true, so true. But yeah, an optional step is to actually buy Lead Code Premium. I don't really, I don't have it personally. Does anybody actually have Lead Code Premium like in the chat or in the, the I feel like I'm a Twitch streamer in the chat. No, I'm not a nerd, facts. But if you do have Lead Code Premium, I am not going to call you a nerd. Low key uh, wealthy. Does anybody know how much Lead Code Premium is? It's a lot, facts. Oh, gross. 150 a year? Dummy expensive for sure. Jesus. Joke's on them. A lot of the Lead Code questions are online. So why do you even need premium? Can we share it? Oh, no student discount. There was a student discount like long, long time ago where if you had like 50 people under the same like domain for school, sign up for this lead code student thing, we get a we get a discount, but don't do it anymore. Yeah, lead code premium, they will some of the features include like answers to questions and like more questions, which is like straight crazy. You have to buy more questions. That's kind of corrupt, but you could also buy the answers, which is kind of crazy. And you have YouTube for answers, exactly. You email me for answers, dog. The three questions that I have finished here may or may not be the only questions I've finished on my account. No promises. But I'm assuming everybody's uh every, everybody's done setting it up. All right, we're good. All right, so we'll start off with the first pattern, which is sliding window. And uh, sliding window is used when we want to operate on a specific window size or uh, of a linked list or an array. So imagine a uh, an entire line, which is going to be your array, and you only want to focus on a specific portion of this array at a time, and you want to do a, you want to check for a specific condition in this array for these amount of elements. This is where sliding window really comes in handy because you can go from each element to each element, and you'll pretty much create, or you pretty much check all of the subsets of this one array with just one pass, like. Uh, 
usually when it comes to questions that involve sliding window, the brute force method is going to come with like a uh, an n squared solution because you're going to be looking through the entire uh, array twice just for one condition. So let's say like in this uh, specific example on the right right here, uh, we want to be we're, we're trying to find something in in terms of k elements that that fit a specific parameter. Uh, if we did this with the brute force method, we will definitely uh, end up with two for loops, uh, probably nested, just so we can find what's in this k, uh, k window. But with a sliding window approach, we can just go through each uh, subset of an array without having to go through it twice. And yep, pretty much that's what I... That's what I did for just making sure I didn't miss anything. Yep. And so how do we identify a sliding window question? Usually it comes with linked lists, arrays, or strings. If anybody needs any clarification for anything that I'm saying right now, please let me know in the in the chat. But yeah, uh, it's probably going to come with link, lays, uh, the link lists, arrays, or strings because they're a linear uh, data structure that you can only traverse in one direction. And uh, usually the questions come with finding a substring of a certain quality. A lot of those are like, oh, what is a substring with duplicate uh, duplicate uh, characters, stuff like that. And uh, also we want, uh, they usually ask you to analyze a portion of the linear data structure of a certain size. That certain size portion is really important because the window itself has to be a certain size. So if it's like something that uh, if we're dealing with a, a data structure that isn't contiguous, like an array, uh, you probably might want to slide away from sliding window. <laughs> that was unscripted. But yeah, so looking, uh, looking at the right uh, example, if, if we read our question and we realize that probably something like one and two, like the first and the last element are related, sliding window probably isn't going to actually work because they're not right next to each other. Uh, so that's how you eliminate sliding window from whatever you're going to be doing. And so an example problem is maximum subarray of size k, longest substring of size k with distinct characters, and string anagrams. And so now here's the uh, fun part. Now we're going to actually solve a sliding window problem. Let me try to let me put this link in the chat real quick. Ah! There you go, guys. Now it's time for us to do leak code. Uh, so the problem is given an array of integers r and two uh, and two integers k, and the threshold return the number of subarrays of size k and average greater than or equal to the threshold. Ah, oh, that's the answer. Ah, hold up, hold up. Don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. So yeah, if you want to. Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna be hacking away at this problem right now. Any questions? <laughs> does anybody does anybody want to uh, talk about their like mind process going through it, or do you guys want like a little a little kick, a little help, or you guys just want to go for the races? This is a very open thing. Anybody can talk. I don't know. We're just chilling here. We're just doing leak code. You know what I'm saying? You still don't get the concept. All right, for sure, for sure. I have I have a I have a portion of pseudocode that we can look at if you guys want to look at that. Or do you guys want to just go straight into it? Again, just a, a quick reminder, sliding window, uh, k elements. We're gonna be trying to go through the elements linearly and uh, focusing on a specific subset and doing an analysis on that specific subset. Uh, before proceeding to the next element. And if you're attempting it, and if you need that extra little little spark, here's uh, here's some pseudocode to help you get started. So first, you want to try to find the sum of the first k uh, integers. So this is into your, from your entire uh, from your entire array. 
Then we want to add a counter to an, uh, if the average of the sum over k is equal to uh, two or greater than the threshold. So that second number that we got, that's the number that we have to be equal to or over, uh, over two, over then to actually uh, add one to, the, to our actual counter. And then for the rest of the array, we want to slide that window up by one element. That's a really big thing that you have to think about is like, how do you actually create this theoretical window and slide it across the entire array, right? And, oh, so the elements and subs have to be adjacent to the, yes, they do. They have to be adjacent to each other. And I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure they have to be uh, sorted. Yeah, the, the array is sorted as well. That's a big thing that you have to remember that the array is sorted. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Hold up. Uh, all right, no, 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 no. The array is not sorted. The array is not sorted. I'm terrible. My bad. Array is not sorted, guys. But yeah, you want to slide up that window up by one element, calculate the average of those k elements. And then if the element is larger than the threshold, then add it to the counter, and then you just return counter. This is a medium, by the way, guys. Just to, just to put it out there, mediums are, they'd be crazy. Does anybody have any questions? Let's give us, dang, this is not enough time. Maybe we go through two. Is anybody done? All right. Hold up. I wanna let's do this. Let's do this. You, everybody who's doing it, just do, just do it on. Just 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 chill. Because we'll do it. We'll do it together, eventually. I'm gonna pull something out like this. Let me change my new share. Let's go desktop two. You guys see this? Oh my God, that's the answers again. No. You guys see this? We're on the, we're on the big, the big screen. I feel, I feel really bad asking. <laughs> like, can you see this? Cause I think you're working on the problem. That's why I'm not going to get anything, but <laughs> please, uh, if you can leave your mic unmuted and then just talk. That'll be great. That'll be great. My lead code is pretty small. Oh, so true. So true. I think, I think this works instead. Oh my gosh. If you're watching the stream right now or the screen right now, I'll just do a little, well, some, some. So we have the, the pseudocode here and I hope I can figure out that the pseudocode works. So find the sum of the first kittens. So let's have a place called in sum where we store the ints or the store the sum of the ints and Let's do four and i equals zero i to the power of k i plus plus. So here we're just gonna find the first or the sum of the first k ints, right? 
So we can do sum plus equals uh, array at i. And so this should have some equal array at i, or uh, some equal all of the first k ints. And so then we're going to store that into a place. Yeah, let's go call it int average. And uh, this int average should be sum divided by k, All right? So let's make a counter. So if uh, average is greater than or equal to k uh, threshold, we're going to do counter plus plus. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Peter, you're hiring me as your interviewing bits. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. All right. So if that makes sense. Now we're going to do something for the rest of the array. And so now we'll do four int j equals. Like for here, it's like, huh, where do I start? So we already got the first k values, right? So, this is so I feel like we'll start at k, right? Because zero, this first part here from zero to k. That means we ended at index k minus one. So now we have to actually add that k index into our sum. This is where sliding window comes in. And so then we're going to do uh, j less than uh, array dot size. So we could actually go to the entire thing. And then we'll go j plus plus. And so for the rest of the array, we want to slide the window up by one element. How the heck do we slide the window up by one element? So let's treat this, let's treat this sum as the window, right? So if we do sum plus or minus equals array, uh, array at k minus j or j minus k, yeah, that's j minus k. So if we do j minus k, we're going to try to get rid of the element that was the first element of our last subset, theoretically sliding the window up by one. Does that make sense? Does, any, does anybody, anybody get lost in the sauce with that one? So, oh, and what what's the difference between an array and a vector? Uh, not really much when you think of like the grand scheme of things, but when you get down to like the really nitty gritty, like an array is uh, just a contiguous piece of memory, while a vector is that contiguous is also a contiguous piece of memory, but turned into a data structure that you can actually do methods on. Oh, right. Yeah. So that's where the like the dot at or we could just do we could do j minus k here, right? Using that array notation. Okay. So since we're using what is it? Uh, so so with the vector you can use things like the like functions, but with the array mm -hmm. you can't. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Okay. Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. Good question. So yeah, so we slid up the window by one. We took out the first element. Now we want to, uh, we slid it up by one. Now we want to add the first or add the last element. So that sounds kind of like array dot at j. And if we add that array at j, then that is the current element that we're on running through like the zero case, right? If we had, uh, if we start right here and then we add it by up by one, then 
k right now at one is what's it called? That's k plus one. I mean, no, no, no. We're adding this the current element, so that works because we only added up to k minus one. So adding at j, which is the kth element, that will be okay. That works. There you go. And so now all we gotta do is calculate the average of these elements. So then let's do uh, I can't use int average again, right? Just do <laughs> int cur average. <laughs> this is why we're not gonna get like really high on the on the rankings, because we're gonna be creating a bunch of stuff that we don't need. But since we understand it, then we're good. So in cur average equals sum divided by k. All right, and then we update the counter if cur average carry or equal to uh, threshold to counter plus plus. Uh, and then return counter. Let's run the code. Let's see if it works. Oh, Loki, Loki first input works. No way. Let's see if it works. Oh, success! Dang it! Why did I why did I success already? Oh wait, no, it says my thing. Nice. Thank you, David's iPhone. <laughs> This runtime is actually faster than the one that, what the heck? How'd that happen? But yeah, did anybody come up with that? Or like, did anybody, that that makes sense? I feel like the hardest part of that is like figuring out how to make the actual sliding window. I got mine to work, but your runtime is bad. Did you actually implement uh, the sliding window? Or is it the runtime as in here? If you implement a sliding window, it's probably o, uh, o of n. Runtime sometimes like comes out down to like, oh, if you created specific, or if you created more than a certain amount of variables here and there. Cause like you can optimize this even farther for increases in runtime. You didn't do exactly what you did. No, that's fine. If you implement a sliding window, that's sick. Are these slides posted they will be posted? Yes, they will. They will be posted. But yeah, uh, does anybody else have any more questions or should we move on from this? And we'll hopefully tackle another another pattern. I feel like this sliding window pattern is very, very useful. It's like super cool. Where are we uh, posting the slides? And we're we'll posting them probably both onto the Slack and the Discord. Wait, so can I, uh, if you click descriptions real quick? That's what you run over. The first example one more time. Yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. your first iteration runs like the first three twos, so like two, 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 mm -hmm. and the next iteration runs the next, and then two, 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 and then mm -hmm. it moves it over again to two, two. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Yep, yep, yep. Exactly, Mundo. <laughs> but yeah, guys, uh, pat yourself on the back. You just completed Elite Code Medium. That's good. That's good. All right, uh, you can play around with this a little bit more later, but we'll just go on to the next pattern so you get some more juicy content. Uh, let's move on to the two pointers pattern. And so the two pointers pattern, this is kind of pretty self-explanatory is where you two pointers iterate through a data structure at the same time. And so they usually iterate in parallel, you know, uh, either one after the other, or maybe the same time even. Uh, but they will iterate at the same time until a certain condition is met. So a lot of this is uh, until a target sum or maybe two sum or three sum, you know, the memes, uh, all that sort of stuff. You just want to find a pair or like a triplet that meet a certain condition. And this is a good alternative to actually looping through the structure twice, because as we said before, when you have a brute force method, you're going to be coming up with the n squared uh, an n squared solution. And since most of the 
uh, stuff here, or sm since most of, the, most of the questions involve sorted arrays, we already know like certain conditions or certain uh, certain elements of the uh, array. So we want to use that to our advantage, right? In target sum, we know that the left most array is going to be the smaller number or the leftmost pointer is the smaller number and the rightmost number is the bigger number and here in this this is a really good example like if we know that the target sum is smaller or bigger we want to actually move our pointers accordingly either make the left number bigger so we can like hit a bigger number or make the right number smaller to decrement that sum Hope that makes sense. But yeah, we're using that that nature of being sorted to our advantage. And so, how do we identify a two pointer problem? Uh, usually, it's sorted arrays or a linked list. That's the big thing. And we also need to find elements that meet a certain condition that we said before. And uh, usually, we want to find sets, uh, triplets, or a subarray uh, with this problem. But also a a big thing is why would you use two pointers over a uh, sliding window? That's like a big, uh, a big question. And it's what I said before, uh, with the sliding window, you want stuff that are contiguous right next to each other. With two pointers, if they're straight, like apart from each other, then that's probably when you would want to use them. And the example problems come with squaring sorted arrays, triplets that sum to zero, and comparing strings that contain backspaces. These are all questions that you can find and look up. But here is the example problem, fun, fun, fun. This one's kind of a doozy, not even gonna lie, but here's the, here's the link. Have fun with that. Oh, it's the answer again. Close your eyes, I'm slap sharing, hold up. Uh, but the problem, yeah, you could look at it, but you're given an integer array uh, of height given length n. And there are n vertical lines drawn such that two endpoints of the ith line are i of zero and i of height i. That's what the two endpoints are. So it becomes a big rectangle. And then find the two lines together with the axis uh, from a container such that the container contains the most water. So we want to maximize uh, the container of water with the two endpoints and then return the maximum amount of water that a container can store. So let me delete my answer here. So remember the two pointer, two pointer approach and uh, I'm gonna go over the pseudocode so we have an easier time. And so here is the pseudocode. So pretty much all we want to do is start at the beginning uh, and end of the array. So this is your two pointers. So we want to start at the beginning and the end. And so while the two pointers don't intersect, because if they do intersect, then we're going to be like, uh, we're going to be uh, comparing the same things pretty much. So like, what's the point? We want to meet in the middle or meet somewhere. So, you know, we don't intersect. We want to find the maximum height of these two pointers. And then we want to find the width of, uh, of the container that we would store with these two pointers as endpoints. Is it sort before using two pointers? No, it is not always 100% necessary because this problem doesn't require sorting. Uh, but uh, usually, if you see a sorted, uh, sorted array, you probably start thinking towards two pointers. But this specific problem is uh, this specific problem isn't sorted, and we're gonna compensate that kind of by doing something in regards to actually incrementing or decrementing which pointer. I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit uh, a little bit later, or towards the end, like step E. So after we find the minimum height of uh, these two uh, of these two points in our array, we want to find the width, which is pretty much uh, the space that the uh, or the amount of space in between the two uh, pointers, and then we calculate the area using that height and width, and then here's we here's where we actually make it kind of sorted in a sense, 
where if the area is larger, oh, yeah, never mind. If the area is larger than uh, the current max, update it. So that's just uh, updating the current max uh, that we return. But here is where we kind of make it kind of sorted, where we increment or decrement the pointer that has the smaller height. So if the left pointer is the one with the smaller height, we want to uh, we want to increment that pointer because we know for a fact that every time we increment one of these pointers, we're going to get a smaller width. But we don't know if we're going to get a smaller height. So we increment or decrement the pointer that is smaller so we have a chance to actually increase our height. Does that make sense? Does anybody get lost on that? Why we how we actually go about incrementing or decrementing the two pointers. You're lost, Howie. Where'd I lose you? Let me know where I lost you. I go over it all again. We'll do it again. I'm here all day. Maybe uh, like a picture or- Yeah, yeah, for sure. Have a picture you yeah, can yeah. show an example of. Yeah. Let me see. Oh man, can I can I make this big big? Oh, there you go. That's big big. All right. Is that is that is that look good? All right. So the big problem that we have in this uh, in this question is that we want to find the big the biggest amount of water, right? And this amount of water is connected to a height and a width. The width is pretty. Uh, that's something that we can control like pretty granularly with the two pointers. So one is going to start, hold up, annotate. So one is going to start right here. Wait, this is, why is it white? Hold up, all right. One's going to start right here. And then one is going to start right here, all right? And so if we started here, the minimum height has to, it takes precedent over the taller height when we're calculating uh, for the amount of water. So this one, if we started off at uh, the very first iteration, this is going to be what our area looks like. Not very high, IMO. But uh, the reason why we don't have to actually sort this, uh, this, pat or this array before doing it or before trying to go out with the calculations is that we know that we're going to make this smaller because we have to uh, decrement it or increment, or, yeah, or increment it, like regardless. Like we, we start off with the maximum width when we do our uh, when we start off our iteration, then the only thing that can go up is the actual height. The height can go up, but the width will always go down. Is that that's what I'm trying to that's what I'm trying to like drive home is uh, two pointers is sorted arrays, but this one doesn't have to be sorted because we have like slight granularity when it comes to uh how we increment our pointers so it's pseudo sorted pseudo but yeah so then we go to the next uh since this one right here was the smaller one we're going to check here so here's our two pointers now and this one stayed right here our two pointers are here so then we find the smaller height which is going to be the one uh, here so then we make a line because we find the width by subtracting uh, subtracting here, subtracting the longest one, which let's call J. And this is I. So if you subtract J minus I, we get width. And then the height is going to be the min of array. at j and then array at i excuse my terrible handwriting but yeah so then once you multiply this if we do that we get area that's all we need so here we're going to see this area and that's pretty big but we might be able to get bigger, right? So then this one's the minimum. We'll go here. Ah, clear. 
This one's the minimum. Change it to here. Now we're still pointing at this. This one's smaller now. So it's like, dang, we we got a smaller height. All right. Next one. Bang. Oh, now we're at a big height. Man, we got a low key looking like a square type of deal. That's probably pretty good. But yeah, now we got to turn that into an algorithm. <laughs> but once we, since we're updating it right here, we don't really need to do anything too crazy. We're just going to increment or decrement or updating it right here. My bad. And then we just return the max at the very end. Did anybody actually finish? Like, with all that, uh, all that tangent, <laughs> we got like five minutes. I'm so sorry that we only went through two. That's crazy. And here I was plan, I was planning for four. <laughs> this was easier than the last one. IMO facts, facts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. We'll go through the solution. Here, I already have the solution. I'm so, here, here's the solution. I did this earlier today. But uh, we have the pseudocode that starts off with storing the maxed water, right? And then we start at the beginning and the end. So here's talking about the I and the J. Uh, we have I is zero and then J is height. Uh, height size minus one and height is the array by the way and then so while the two points don't intersect that's a classic uh, i is less than j we want to find the minimum height so we uh, use cur height min uh, we call the min function of height at i height at j and then we find the width which is what i said before i uh, just j minus i and then we find the area uh, we already calculated the height and the width so that's a simple uh, multiplication and then updating it. And then we update uh, We update it by finding out which one's the max, the current max, which at the very beginning is set to zero. So anything during the first pass is going to be the current max. Uh, and that's going to be stored. And then here, as I talking about before, if the height at i is smaller, we want to increment i. If the height at i is bigger, we want to decrement j. That's the you know fluxing of the width. And we potentially get a higher uh, height or a bigger height with a new uh, a new element at either two of the endpoints. And then after that, we return max. And then we'll just double check the submit button. Bada bing, bada boom. 35%. Oh, no way. That's pretty cool. So you move the pointer with the smaller height. Yes. Because you have, you know for a fact that the height is going to get smaller. We know that it, like, there's no way that we could get a bigger height because we already checked the biggest height at the very beginning. So we know it's going to get smaller. The only thing that could go up is the height. So if it's a smaller height, then we want to try to gamble on a higher one. Either increment or decrement the left, yep, left or report. Yep. You increment the left or decrement the right. Yep. Exactly. Any questions? I hope that went, uh, I hope that was understandable. I hope this is helpful too. We have two minutes left. Let's talk about fast and slow pointers. <laughs> uh, I don't really want to, I don't really want to bore you guys. Are, are you guys, do you guys want to know about this or are you guys, you guys got a dip? I'll stay here. I, I don't have nothing else to do. So if, if anybody's interested, Speed run it. Oh man, this is like the hardest thing to speed run. This is like the one that I dreaded to actually explain because it's crazy. All right. So if you have to go in two minutes, let me let me shoot, let me say thanks for coming. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but also I want to point you towards some resources that are some that are pretty cool. Uh, here, this is the actual uh, slides that. I pulled from to actually, and research to actually get all these 14 patterns. Well, these slides uh, article you mentioned posted. Here's the, yes, Sean, here's this article and the slides are gonna be posted whenever we're done conversating here uh, during, uh, or on Discord and our uh, Slack. So don't forget to post the slide. This is Jim, thank you, appreciate it. And I won't forget. 
Thank you guys. Thank you. And also uh, another little resource is cracking the coding interview, the the classico. I'll send everyone this meeting. Uh, yeah, if you want to really get into the weeds of you know coding interviews and stuff, uh, make sure you pick up that book. I'm pretty sure there's the on, there's an online PDF version of it, so it's not hard to get. But there's also this really cool infographic that I uh, spotted on that where it takes you through the entire actual coding uh, in-person interview where this is what uh, interviewers want to see, like, oh, debug your example, like go through the brute force, optimize it, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that's a cool thing to have for reference. But yeah, before 50, yeah, if you want to, if you want to go, have a great day. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Hope you learned something. Hope you were able to understand what I was saying. But yeah. Later, guys. Later.